the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I say every Sunday that I love this gospel. And it's no different with today's gospel. But to, and today, as we reflect upon the two readings uh, from the epistle and the gospel, I want to point out that the epistle leads into the gospel. And it's not coincidental that the church prescribes these two readings together. And that's frequently the case, that so often the epistle reading and the gospel reading are connected. And it's so to, to make a point to the faithful, to those who are hearing the word of God uh, before proceeding into the liturgy, of preparing our hearts for what is to come, the holy and the profound Eucharist. So we'll begin with the epistle. And actually, in today's epistle, we have the actual definition of the word church. And in this sentence, come, or therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And of course, ecclesia, church, uh, is basically the assembly of those called out, who are separated out for the Lord. That gathering of people, that is what is called the church. Therefore, come out, be separate, do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. As we reflected upon last week, we will be family to our God. That the kinship that we have with our God and with one another in Christ surpasses even the family ties even our own blood ties. It is the tie of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, together with the Father and the Son, that bind us to one another, but to Him. And so it is. We are called out, and we are struggling to live the life in Christ. So let us consider that, but we'll put it aside just for a moment and proceed into the gospel and then come back to the epistle. And I, I mention this every year because it's crucial for the context of this gospel to understand it. And for any of the, the, those who like to go fishing, we can get a sense of what the apostles are feeling here. And we can identify with the feeling that the apostles are experiencing ourselves. So the men and the women and the children today who've been fishing, you know how it is when you go fishing and you don't catch anything. You go home and, well, I heard it said it's called fishing for a reason. It's not called catching. Right, And so there's joy in the process of actually doing the fishing. But when you don't catch anything, there's a bit of, of disappointment. There can be. You're looking forward, you hear the lake is loaded, and then you don't catch a thing. Maybe you see it, other fishermen around, they're catching all kinds. And then you catch nothing. <laughs> right? The apostles today, They've been, well, at least Simon, the sons of Zebedee, are out fishing. And when the Lord comes to them, they're cleaning their nets, right? So they're done with fishing. And as Simon Peter said, they, they toiled all night and caught nothing. And then they're there in the morning and they're cleaning their nets. 
It's a lot of work. It's their livelihood. It's how they're making a living. So how much more so, you know, it's not just recreational fishing, so we don't really have much to despair about when we don't catch something. But if it's our livelihood, then there's a little bit more. A little more um, investment, you might say. And so they're there cleaning their nets. And, oh, we haven't caught anything. We've got to, we're not going to sell and market today. We're going to go home. And we didn't catch anything. Oh. So it's not a very happy scenario when the Lord walks up to them. And then the Lord says to them, as they're cleaning their nets, okay, now launch out again. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And, and you can imagine Peter and James and John, oh, seriously? We just cleaned our nets, Lord. We caught nothing, Lord. But okay, you're the teacher, and so we'll go out and we'll let down our nets for a catch. You know, maybe they were sarcastic. I, I don't know. Maybe they weren't. That's just me. But at your word, we'll let down the net. That's all. At your word, we'll let down the net. Simply because you ask it. And then, of course, we know what happens. The, they pull up the net. The net's beginning to break. They can't hold all the fish, and they actually have to call some folks over. Help us. We can't contain all of the fish that we've caught. Now, Simon Peter then falls down at the knees of Jesus and is repenting. You know, metania. You know, that's what we call when we touch the floor, which is just so that we touch, you know, make a full bow. That's how we touch the floor. We're not doing toe touches. That's a metania. It's a symbol of humility and repentance before God. And essentially, and then the prostration, and that's what actually Peter does. He gets down on his knees, touches his forehead to the ground before the Lord, and says, Depart, I'm a sinful man. Now, for Peter to, to do this, he had to have something going on. Maybe it was sarcasm. Maybe he was angry and trying not to let it show. I know I experienced that. You know, maybe, it, okay, so I'm, I'm having anger, but at least maybe in this case, by not letting it just blast out, right? <laughs> that I am exercising some virtue. And that's true. And so maybe Peter was there, but he's still, you know, inside like... <laughs> and so maybe something like this was happening with Peter, and he repents. Oh my gosh. Lord, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. And this is the case with every Christian. Scripture says... There is no man who lives who does not sin. And we are quick to repent when we sin. We are quick to flee to the church, to Christ himself, that is what the church is, and to repent, to confess our sins, to remain on the road, to purify. Confession is like going to the laundromat and cleaning our whitest clothes to make them pure, like our baptismal garments, white as snow. So you see how these, the epistle reading and the gospel reading flow together. They're called out. We're called out. Do not touch what is unclean. The, the last passage from the epistle, having these promises, my beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness Perfecting holiness. And who is holy? Our God. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Father. We imitate them. That's how we know how to perfect holiness in our lives. Not perfectionism, but striving to live into the image of Christ. This is our task. And that is essentially what the Lord is getting at in, the, in this miracle. One of the ways that the church has viewed the, these scriptures is that the fish coming up, not only is it the church, because the Lord says you will be fishers of men, and there will be so many fish coming into the boat, right? One way. The other way is our spiritual catch. That the Lord will fill our spiritual nets, even when we least expect it, as long as we remain on the path and strive for love, strive for holiness. The apostles, you know, the Lord first says, do not be afraid. And the apostles do something unbelievable. They forsook all and followed him. We are called in one way or another to forsake all. To be called out, separated from. But let us be bold to live into the life of the church. Because the life in the church is the very life in which Christ has given. It is Christ's own life. And in living this life, we shall meet our Lord face to face and be rewarded with salvation. Eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.